There are two people above us. Above us, above us. It does get a bit toxic sometimes. I'll give an example. Uh, we being Kashmiris, if we play on server that's not Indian, we get called Indian trash. But on the contrary, if we play on Indian servers, we get called stone pelters or Kashmiri terrorists. But we don't let that affect us because it's not true. Gaming in Kashmir is an escape for a lot of people. To get away from all the bad things happening around them. But we never know when people will sink back into depression if the internet and communication is snapped again. gaming since I remember and I don't think I would have turned out any better if it wasn't for the games. I started playing games with my brother and my cousins. All of us used to be in one room locked up gaming all day. One teaspoon, other a side, other side. मुझे याद है अभी भी PUBG Mobile मेरी बहन खेलती थी मुझसे पहले क्योंकि उसके पास फोन था क्योंकि वो साइंस पढ़ती थी मैं पूरा टाइम बिजी रहती थी गेमिंग के साथ और इतना एक्साइटेड रहती थी जब मैं गेमिंग में आई मैंने लड़की कहीं नहीं देखी इवन अगर मैं अपने रिलेटिव्स में बात करूं फ्रेंड्स में बात करूं कोई लड़की नहीं थी और वो लोग मुझ पे हंसते थे कि तुम क्या गेमिंग खेल रही हो ये लड़के खेलते और तुम्हें आता है टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन में हाइप पे पहुंच गई थी मैं मतलब मेरी गेमिंग लेकिन जैसे ही टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन ऑगस्ट फाइव वाला चीज हो गया बस खत्म मैं पूरा डिप्रेशन वापस वही सब गोल होके वापस से आ गया और मुझे बिल्कुल समझ नहीं आ रहा था अब मैं अपने टाइम को कैसे काटू तो फिर वही चीज़ें होने लगी टेम्पल रन सबवे सर्फ की गेमिंग में ही रही गेमिंग से बाहर नहीं निकली वो छोटी छोटी गेम्स होती थी वो ऑफलाइन गेम्स है मैं ज़्यादातर अपने रिलेटिव्स के साथ ही खेलती थी कजन्स वगैरह फ्रेंड्स वगैरह होते थे उनके साथ खेलती थी लेकिन फिर वो हमेशा अवेलेबल नहीं हो पाते थे मेरे साथ खेलने में तो मैंने कहा कि मैं ज़्यादा टाइम फ्री रहती थी तो मैं फिर ऑटो मैचिंग पे चली जाती थी ऑटो मैचिंग पे मुझे बाहर के भी मिलते थे और लोकल वो भी मिलते थे लेकिन जैसा कि कुछ लड़के इस चीज़ को गंदा बना देते हैं कुछ लोग जैसे ही लड़की वाला नाम देखते हैं ना तो पता नहीं उनके दिमाग में कौन सी गंदी चीज़ें उठ जाती है और वो इस चीज़ को गंदा बना देते हैं जबकि ये गंदी थी नहीं ये बहुत ही अच्छी चीज़ मेरे लिए साबित हुई और बहुत सारे लोगों के लिए भी साबित हो चुकी होगी तो उस वजह से मेरे पापा को भी ये गेमिंग वाली चीज़ जो है वो गंदी लगने लगी It was not just lockdowns. It's a constant battle being a gamer. The continuous power shutdowns, the curtailment schedule, loss of internet because of snow, lines falling over all over the place. But if we are talking about the internet shutdown that we had a stretch for six months for a year and for some time in that we had access to 2G, that was no internet at all. Most of the apps were blocked. It does affect gamers, especially those who want to go pro, who want to compete at the highest level. If I go back when I was 19, when I could risk it, when I could maybe think about it as a career path, but when I had no internet, what do I play? How do I play?
before 2000 when one of my cousins had a Nintendo. We used to play at his home and we had an electricity schedule. So it was to and fro. When they had electricity, uh, we didn't have electricity and vice versa. So we used to play at his home first, then we came here. We had a very small bicycle and we used to ride it along with the console and then we used to move to and forth and keep kept on playing and playing and playing. Because we had nothing else to do, we were kids. Access to Tekken 3 was very easy. As far as I remember, there were 10 odd arcades just in this area. The arcade gaming in Kashmir was considered a taboo because maybe uh, some elements of the society uh, sought refuge in the arcade. This used to be my daily routine. Daily routine ka, kabhi kabhi. Kabhi kabhi ek din mein do teen baar bhi. Ghar se yahan tak. Ghar se yahan tak, ghar se wapas. Ye abhi lag raha hai mujhko, matlab abhi to nahi lag raha hai utna distance. Ki jab main chhota tha, tab taangi bhi choti thi. Ye lagta tha bahut zyada ye door hai. My entire childhood was fo focused around this area because uh, my nani lives around there. So I said, we used to get money from them only. Mm -hmm. She used to give us one rupee, one rupee coin and then we used to come here. This was the place where we spent most of our days. And there are so many good memories associated with that. The worst part is that our parents were opposed, opposed to this because to as I said, yeah. But the thing is, we were so foolish, we used to keep the bicycle outside and then go inside. So they would just know they're inside and they'll get hold of us and... Disciplined. <laughs> yeah, we got disciplined at times. This used to be an arcade, mm -hmm. but now this is owned by a cable company. You used to play yeah. here? Yeah, yeah, we used to play here also. How so, many arcades did this area have? I guess at least 15. Then the arcades moved on. At the same time, a different kind of gaming culture was developing within ourselves because we had access to internet or we had gotten our own PC. Oh, sir, mid se aaya player. GG boys. Snooker 147, V Cop, House of Dead. Those were the earliest of games. They didn't require a graphics card to run. So that is where it all began. Uh, I guess it was maybe 14 years ago when we had just discovered that we could use internet on our phones also. At that time, we used to, uh, maybe it was the onset of Facebook also. We discovered a game called Counter-Strike, uh, the first version, Source. It was called Emporio. Most of the old players of Counter-Strike have played that game. We used to put IPs on our Facebook walls, we used to create servers and then people used to join. We used to start in the evening and till morning we used to play. It was just pure gaming. Back in 2013, there's a company called Loud Beto. They organized the first LAN tournament. But we had been organizing online tournaments even before that. We lent our equipment, we got the switches, we got the LAN cables which was very difficult during those times. Today, speaking about these things, it sounds it's so easy. Yeah? Laptop lana hai, udar lagana hai, ho gaya. After that, multiple tournaments kicked in in IT Srinagar. They have organized tournaments, uh, many tournaments, and we have participated in all of them. And Alhamdulillah, our team is still undisputed, undefeated. Team X3. During 2019, it was more of a community than games. I used to go every night, I used to spend time with my friends on Discord. Even if I, I was not playing, I was at least talking to my friends. And uh, it affected all of us. The night that internet was snapped, we didn't know the reason or anything. So in the night when I got disconnected, I thought it's a normal internet outage that 
was happening uh, in it's Kashmir. No, it's, a no, it's a normal for us, basically. No, it's it's not. It's absurd to call it normal. It has become normal for us, but it has become normal. For yeah, us. It's, it's not normal, but kind of it had become normal for us. I thought uh, something happened. Then all of a sudden, the mobile network was also gone. The landlines were gone. We had no idea what had happened. We only had access to 2G internet and I don't think you can even call it 2G, it was restricted to 10 kilobits per second. So it was really slow, uh, most of the websites were blocked, you only had access to some of the web, I think 80-90% of the web was still blocked. We couldn't game, Steam was blocked, Origin was blocked, everything. Mental health because of those shutdowns, because of no communication, did not just affect gamers, it affected everybody in Kashmir. And yeah, most people feel sick because of it. I was not even here between that one and a half years, at least for the most time. I was in Bangalore, I was pursuing my bachelor's and for six, seven months, I was not able to talk to my family. And I was constantly worried how my family is doing, what my parents are doing. It was a battle and I struggled during that time. I couldn't sleep, I didn't eat well and it's not just gaming. People of every kind were affected by that lockdown and it's a bad memory for everybody in Kashmir. When I was in Bangalore, I used to buy plans for my friends because they want to have access to internet, they want to play games. They used to send me money, I used to buy VPN plans. I used to download games from Steam or Origin or whatever, then back them up, get them in my hard drive and give it to my friends. Not just my friend group, a lot of people used to do it like that. I used to visit after six months, they had to wait six months for me to come, then give them new games. We stay, enjoy it for a little while, then again they had to wait. The gaming community or beat any community in a region like Kashmir can act as a means of developing relationships uh, that promotes understanding and which promotes unity uh, especially for the youth that gather around competes together plays together works together at esports events in particular forming bonds of community and belonging that cut across social and political divides So based on my experiences, if you can see which is gaming related to my own, there is no scope for female gamers in Kashmir. Most of the female gamers in Kashmir take it as fun, which they used to play in their free time and then khatam. There is not any kind of seriousness or consistency found among female gamers. Gaming is obviously a virtual field, hai. you need internet. But in the place like Kashmir, you can't predict what will happen to the next time. Hoga. If you're asking uh, what future is holding for gamers like us, if they male or female, it holds nothing but disappointment. Gaming has been very important for me. On my wedding night, I have gamed. Retirement match. Farewell. I played a game and I sent a picture of me playing to my wife that, see, this is very important for me. I have recently become a parent, so it's a message to the parents only that look at it in a much generous way because I consider myself very lucky that I discovered that I could play games because it has helped me in, I mean, I guess all the aspects. I have become a problem solver rather than, you know, speaking about my problems. As long as we have internet, gaming is going to flourish in Kashmir. Athar is doing a flawless job. He has created a wonderful community. I guess most of the people who currently game online only are connected to Kong Gaming. For a lot of time, because of the inconsistency in the internet and low speeds, we never thought of YouTube. Since 2013, the community kept building different games, a lot of people joined, and all of them pretty good at the games. So I decided to come up with Kong Gaming. Yeah, our YouTube channel to showcase the talent of everyone in Kashmir. Kong Gaming is fairly recent. It used to be Kashmiri gaming community before. We were a bunch of kids, 13, 14 years old. And one of us being silly, so that's how we came up with KGC, Kashmiri gaming community. Kong Gaming is a very interesting game. My dad was in Jammu and he got me a PlayStation 2. He used to play a bit of games on that. I remember him calling me and in Kashmiri saying me, Atman cho asli na Kong Gaming is something that I'm focusing as much as my software developer job. Right now, I do not expect to make 
money out of it. But I hope in the future it can be a platform for all of us to make money. So how long have you guys been meeting like this? It's been like two years since I came back from Bangalore when I got ambassadors. And it's been happening since then. And we uh, meet uh, pretty often, I guess, once or twice a month. Okay, so, yeah. All good? Good. Streaming is on peak, huh? Yeah? What is it? Streaming is on peak. But we to live viewers. Then we party Apex is better than Warzone 2.0. Change my mind. Did you see that moment difference? Yes, I did. I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the house.